Hey everyone, I'm Baba Khandalwal and I welcome you all to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will be going over the assembly in C sharp. But first, let me remind you that we have a daily update on numerous technologies. So if you are a tech geek looking for the latest technological innovation, then try subscribing to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an update on Simply Learn. So now, without any further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. We will begin our session with the discussion on what is assembly. We will also go over the content of the assembly. After that, we will discuss what an assembly cache is. Then we will have a look at the types of assembly along with the global assembly cache. Finally, we will wrap, wrap the session with the demo on private assembly. So, with the, without any further ado, let's get started with the simple trivia. So now, what is a metadata? Is it a data about data creation, a data about author, a data about the data type, or all of the above? Make sure to comment down below to answer your response. So now, let's get started with the discussion on what is c -sharp assembly. First, an assembly is a combination of types and resources intended to work together to form a coherent block of capabilities. Based on the scope, an assembly can be a DLL or an EXE. Next, for .NET based application, assemblies are the primary components of implementation, versioning, repurpose, installation scoping, and privacy authorization. A reflection can be used to obtain information about an assembly prog programmatically. At last, assembly provides the necessary information for the common language runtime that is CLR to be informed of type implementation. A type does not exist anywhere except the context of an assembly according to the runtime. Next, let's go over the content of assembly. An assembly comprises of seven content. First up, manifest. The manifest contains the data about all of the parts that are considered to be the part of the assembly itself. The data in the manifest is also referred to as a metadata. Next up, we have assembly name. Now it helps in version control and visibility scope. Then we have version information. The assembly's identity, it includes the version number. Next type, next is types. The types define the scope and the boundary of methods, classics, properties, events, and attributes. After that, we have locale, which defines the information about the language or the culture. Then we have cryptographic hash. It is the public key encoded hash acting as the version security check. Finally, we have security permissions. The permissions that can be permitted for all facets of the assembly's content are determined by the privileges within the assembly. Next up, we have assembly cache. Now, when you install the .NET SDK, the framework creates a repository. On your system. The assembly cache is the term coined for this repository. Also, the cache is divided into two sections, the private and global. Now, shared assemblies are stored in the global cache. The private section may, be, may contain restricted files for an application. So, the files are downloaded by our application during runtime are also saved in this cache private section. Finally, all assemblies in the global cache must be shared and have distinct namespaces. 
The folder name holds the information about the assembly's distinct identity. The assembly cache can be identified in your Windows directory in the assembly's subfolder. Next, let's go over the types of assembly. Now, there are two types of assembly in .NET. The process assembly and the library assembly. Process assembly has .exe files while the library assemblies has .dll files. The library assemblies are of two types. We have a private assembly and shared assembly or a public assembly. First up, private assembly. Private assemblies must be copied separately in all applications folder where the assembly's functionality are to be used without copying. We cannot access the private assembly's features and power. Now when we have a private assembly, we can only copy into the bin folder of each application folder. <coughs> Next, we have shared or public assemblies. Now it is not necessary to copy into each application folder separately. The shared assembly is another name for a public assembly. At the system level, only one copy is required. There is no need to copy the assembly into the application folder. Next, we have global assembly cache. When an assembly is needed for more than one project or an application, then we must create it with a strong moniker and keep it in GSE or the assembly folder by installing, installing it within the GSE util command. Finally, let's us understand the assemblies by a demo. So we will move over to our Visual Studio. Now here, let's create a new project. We will create a class library. Make sure it is of the C-sharp type, not the F-sharp. We will click next. Let's name this a private library. Private assembly. Then we will hit next. We will use the .NET Core 3.1, the long-term support. And we will hit create. First, we will be creating some using statements. So, we will be including some libraries using using command. First, we will have system dot collection dot generic. Then, we will have using system dot link. Then, we have using system dot text. Next up, let's write up the code for this class. But first, let's rename this class to make it easier for us to understand for the later stages. Let's name it private assembly. This will ask us to change the class as well. So we will go ahead and click yes. And this will change the class as well. Now let's write up some functions for this private assemblies. So let's first have a public function, public end. Let's have it an addition function. Let's have argument here as well, int n1, comma, int n2. Now, let's introduce a variable res to store the result, n1 plus n2. Next, we will return 
this res. Let's write another function similar to this. Let's have a subtraction function. So public and subtraction. So int n1 comma int n2. Similarly, we will introduce rest function, rest variable to store the result n1 minus n2 <coughs> and we will return rest. Let's save this. Now we will add another project. This will be a web application. So we'll head next. Let's name this one as a private assembly web application. Let's use the framework as 4.7.2 and hit create. We will use the web form. So let's click create. And here we have the web application. Now let's build both of these. Okay. So first what we will do is we will right click this and go on open folder in file explorer. This is a folder. We will go into this bin folder. Now what we are looking for here is the private assembly dot DLL, which signifies that uh, the private assembly is now present in our web application as well. So we have private assembly web application dot DLL, but not the private assembly dot DLL. So to do that, we will go back to our visual studio. So now what we will do is we will right click on private assembly web application. We will add a reference. Now you might first see this assemblies. We will go to the project, the solution and we will see we have a private assembly. So we will right click on it and click OK. Now we will right click on this and go back to that folder. Then we will go to bin and here now we have the private assembly dot DLL present. Now let's go back to our slides. <clears throat> and this was all for today's session. Hope you guys found it informative and helpful. If you like this session, then like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions, then you can drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.